I grew up in um, rural Cornwall. My parents were really liberal. Um, my mum studied sociology at university, so she was kind of really into feminism. They always gave me gender neutral toys and stuff. So I was really lucky to have that. In year five, I had my first girlfriend um, and we went for, out for about two weeks. And after those two weeks, she kind of said to me, OK, we've been kissing in the toilets in secret and going to the water fountain in secret and things, but I think we should stop because we're going to get found out. And if we get found out, people will start calling us lesbians. And at that point, I didn't know what the word lesbian meant. It just sounded to me like it was an insult. When I went to secondary school, um, the word gay being used as meaning kind of weird or abnormal or a bit stupid um, was used all the time. I was quite worried about being accused of being a lesbian, but I never really thought that being gay was something that could apply to me. So I kind of used the words myself and was part of the whole thing. It never really made me feel uncomfortable in any way. And I think that's part of what's really scary about the, the way those words are used, that I didn't realise the effect that it was having on me until a lot later. One of the dangerous things about having words like gay or lesbian as um, kind of words that have a lot of baggage that maybe aren't actually associated with what they mean um, is that it becomes very, very difficult for people to then identify with them. My girlfriend at the minute um, kind of knew she was gay from when she was about 14 and she often talks about how much she struggled with at school her own friends kind of saying, oh, that's so gay and meaning weird or abnormal and in her head thinking that's me and how do I fit those two together if this being something that describes me and also being something that describes things that are a bit weird or stupid. So I first realised that I might be gay in my final year of university. I was walking in silence with my flatmate and it suddenly occurred to me that what had happened with Philippa back in year five, my girlfriend from primary school, um, might connect in some way to why I was feeling so unhappy then. And suddenly I noticed all these things in my life that kind of made sense and a pattern and I suddenly thought, oh my god, what if I'm actually a bit gay? And it took me kind of six pretty turbulent, horrible months from that point to actually deciding that I was gay and coming out as a lesbian. All of those years of hearing it as an offensive word did have a really damaging effect. So even when I started thinking, okay, maybe I'm attracted to women, it took a really long time to be able to take the negative connotations away from that word lesbian and think, this is something I could actually call myself. If I could give some advice to young people who are struggling with um, bullying around homophobic or transphobic or biphobic um, language, I would probably say to try and get in contact with people from the LGBT community. And as soon as you talk to people who understand your experiences and maybe identify with the same experiences that you've had, um, it stops you from feeling so alone and isolated. Especially as teachers, it's really important to teach that these words aren't swear words. If you don't tell someone off and you actually sit them down and say, look, this is a story about my friend who's gay and how they found it difficult, or this, these are the reasons why saying that could cause real damage to people, I think children would really connect with that. Because children don't mean to be insulting when they say that's so gay, it's just a part of the vocabulary that they use. In the future, I'd really like to see um, words like gay or lesbian being used to describe gay or lesbian people <laughs> in a really calm and normal way, in the same way that they might say an English person or um, a cat, <laughs> you know? Um, so just a normal word that actually means what it means.